Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Lake MRI. And this is a 61-year-old female with complaints of chronic right hip pain. And we have an x-ray here of her right hip. And we have an MRI, a T1-weighted view of the right hip to show you the um, findings on two different uh, imaging modalities. Now on the x-ray we see that the greater trochanter here this is the lesser trochanter, by the way. The light, greater trochanter has irregularity. There's lobulation of the contour. It's not really clean and sharply defined. The lesser trochanter, though, is clean, sharply defined margins here. Now, if I take the same patient and look at, at their other hip, we can see what it should look like. We should see a nice, sharply defined cortical border, very smooth, on the lesser and greater trochanters. But on this side, you see this lobulation, like there's new bone formed over the top causing the margins to be irregular rather than sharp and smooth. Now in the MRI scan we see that there is this extra layer of bone, the cortex is underneath, and then there's a new layer of cortex over the top. So this is periosteal new bone formation. This is right at the gluteus uh, tendon attachments to the greater trochanter. And when you have a chronic inflammatory process that involves the attachments of these tendons, we call that an enthesopathy or um, enthesitis, and the chronic inflammation can cause new bone formation over the periosteum, and you get this lobulation uh, of the contour, and uh, you can see bone on x-ray like this. MRI, the bone is more difficult to appreciate, but we can see right here this little piece of uh, bone, and this strip of uh, new bone over here. So we can put up some fluid sensitive images on the MRI to look at this a little bit better to see if it's severely inflamed or just minimally inflamed. And here we see the greater trochanter. We see the margins are ill defined. We see a little foggy brightness over the top. So this is some mild inflammation right at the attachments. You can see this is part of the tendon attaching the gluteus tendons. And this is that edema over the margin. You can see it's a little bit lobulated. So this is active inflammation of the right hamstring tendon attachment to the greater trochanter. And when we see this, we think about something like psoriatic arthritis or ankylosing spondylitis. Now in this case where we see um, enthesopathy in this one area, we're going to look in other areas. Plain films, we can do that really easily. We scoot this patient over. And here, so the classic places to get enthesopathy are the greater trochanters. We do see this on the right, the lobulated contour. Left side is very smooth, so not over here. Also over here, there's the iliac crest. We can see that there is some traction spurring over here in these little areas of irregularity. So we do see some enthesopathy over here. This is where the gluteus muscles come up and attach over here. And the abdominal muscles come down and attach on the top. And on this side, we see another little area. A little bit of irregularity and spurring. And then one last place to look is the SI joint. So and here we go. This is the right sacroiliac joint. The ileal side, we see this is too dense. This is uh, bone sclerosis and there's some scalloping here along the inferior margin, so erosive changes. So this is evidence of right greater than left sacroiliitis. So they have the classic findings of an enthesopathy, little spurs in different places, most pronounced here over the greater trochanter, and evidence of sacroiliitis. And in this case, this is most compatible with psoriatic arthritis. Ankylosing spondylitis is usually more symmetrical. You can get fusion of the SI joints. This is kind of asymmetrical and pretty classic for the psoriatic arthritis, so we'll mention that as a possibility. Things like rheumatoid arthritis can cause inflammatory changes, but usually not these enthesopathic changes. Usually the joint is narrowed and um, um, it infects the articular, the weight-bearing joints and cartilage. And this process is more involving the antheses or the tendon attachments to the bone. Now this patient had one other thing that was contributing to their pain. It was a little labral tear. So this is a femoral head. This is the acetabulum, the cup it sits in and rotates. And we see a little area of brightness there along this labrum. This little black triangle is a labrum. As we get to right there, we see this little horizontal band as a tear of the labrum. On this view, this is a sagittal view looking in profile. This is the front, top, back, and this is that acetabulum. And we see a little white thing there. That is that tear of the anterior superior hip labrum. That's a labrum right there. And a little white line is a tear going beneath it. And that's it. So they have a tear of the right hip labrum that is contributing to the pain. And they have this chronic inflammatory process likely related to psoriatic arthritis. 
um, that may be contributing to their symptoms. Thank you very much.